Hi folks, my name is Fred. Thanks for stopping by. This is part two of a restoration of a circa 1900 F.E. Myers belt-driven water pump. In part one of this restoration, I showed you the pump disassembled and explained the individual parts. Today I'm going to explain the pump's operation and actually show it functioning. I believe this to be a fairly rare model pump by the fact that I could find no information or pictures of this pump on the internet. The F.E. Myers Corporation, however, is still in business and making quality pumps even today, 115 years later. I did what they call a minimal restoration of this pump. I wanted to make it operational but not ex change the exterior weathered look. Sandblasting and painting would be not difficult with such a small pump if someone wanted to restore the external. I don't have a period hit and miss engine uh, to power this pump so I installed a temporary hand crate for demonstration purposes. It can easily be removed if we decide to run it on a gas engine. This pump is belt driven has two pulleys. One pulley is the drive pulley and the other is the idler pulley. When not pumping, the flat belt rides on the idling pulley and just spins without the pump moving. To activate the pump, the flat belt is slid over the drive pulley which starts the pumping action. The parts are the drive pulley, turns, which turns the main shaft, which turns the small pinion, which is connected to the main gear. The main gear uh, has a crankshaft with two eccentric cams, one on each end, two connecting arms, a yoke, and a connecting rod in the middle that connects to the pumping piston. It also has two check valves in the base and in the piston. Uh, how it works. We'll start with the piston at the bottom of the stroke. As the piston rises in the cylinder bore, it causes a suction below the piston. This suction opens the base valve, drawing water in from the input port to the underside of the piston. When the piston reaches the top of the cylinder, gravity and volume of water closes the base check valve. The piston then starts back down. The water pressure in the cylinder from the piston moving down pushes open the piston check valve and the water below the piston is pushed through the piston check valve to an area in the cylinder above the top of the piston. When the piston is again at the bottom of the stroke, gravity again closes the piston check valve. There's now a column of water trapped in the cylinder above the piston. When the piston rises, again, two things happen. The water above the piston is pushed out of the outlet port, and the suction below the piston again, again opens the base check valve, and the suction draws in water from the input port again. This process repeats on every stroke, resulting in a pumping action. So let's give it a spin. I will be taking this pump to upstate New York Pioneer and Engine shows this summer. I may even try to talk one of my friends with a hit and miss engine into hooking it up to their engine and giving it a powered workout. Okay folks, so that's a wrap on this project. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or maybe share it with a friend. You may also enjoy view viewing some of my other antique engines and machining videos. Again, thanks for watching.